Welcome to the Divine Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Roche, and together we are walking the path of discovering your true self and the alignment with your soul. Through these conversations, you will experience a deeper level of connection with yourself and the universe, and most importantly, you will trust in your spiritual journey ahead. Let's begin. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Divine Connection podcast. Today we are talking about how to deal with difficult relationships. And this is actually a question that was submitted. And so I'm really excited to answer this question. And by the way, if you want to submit your question to be answered on the podcast, you can do so. Just go to the link below, christinaaroche.com forward slash podcast, and you will see the button to ask Christina a question. So let's answer this question. And really what the question is, is it's asking, you know, how do you get through the tough times when you are, you know, have a specific relationship, someone that is close to you, someone that maybe you live with, like, how do you get through that difficult period together? And, you know, kind of also asking about the higher perspective around relationships. So let's start with that. The first thing I want to talk about is, you know, just giving this basic understanding that all relationships that we have, whether they are romantic or family relationships or friendships or whatever it is, all relationships are here to help us grow, even if they're difficult, especially the ones that are difficult. And, um, you know, they're all here to help us to heal, to grow, to become a better version of ourselves and to help us to remember who we are right? As souls, as divine beings. So that's kind of like the basic thing about relationships is that we are here to help each other. We are here to trigger each other. We're here to help each other. We are here to support the elevation, even though in the moment it doesn't feel like it. And especially if you, if it's a relationship with someone who, you know, obviously for you listening to this, you are most likely very highly likely to be on the path of awakening and to the path of healing and um, understanding your spiritual truth. And the person who you have in mind may not be on that path. The person who you have in mind may be in a space where they are so set on being difficult or they're so set in their ways, or they just are not on that path of becoming a better version of of themselves or healing their traumas or whatever. So how do we deal with this kind of situation? So this is what we're going to move through. And, And as part of this conversation of understanding that relationships are here to help us to grow, the thing that they do, they do this in many different ways. But the main thing is that, like I said, they trigger us. So they will trigger old wounds for us to for us to see it right? They will trigger old layers to come to the surface so that we can be aware of those wounds so that we have an opportunity to heal because we cannot heal if we are not aware of what we're holding on to. So the wounds come up, the triggers come up so that we can heal. Um, relationship Relationships are also here to challenge us, right? They challenge us to become a better version of ourselves. They, they push us. They, they make us grow. They make us want to become a better version of ourselves, hopefully. Um, essentially, that's the point. And again, it's free will. So whatever it is that someone chooses, it's it's their free will to choose that. But they do challenge us to become more of who we're meant to be. So there's the relationships where, you know, it's it's a very healthy relationship. And, you know, you kind of push each other in a good way to to become the very best version of, of yourselves. And then there's also the relationships where it's very hard and difficult, but it's still an opportunity for you to become the best version of you. And that's essentially one of the core things to remember about relationships is that even though we're talking about, you know, being connection with another person, it really is essentially all about you. Like this is where we have to focus on ourselves. And I know that in some situations, it's very tempting to say, well, if only that person stopped being like this. If only they stopped doing the thing that they're doing. If only they did this. If only they did that, right? We And we start to blame the other person. Like, it's their fault that I'm feeling this way, <laughs> you know? And like, yes, they're the, they're the ones who are triggering, 
whatever it is inside of you. But essentially what we have to focus on is ourselves and understand that this is for us. Like, yes, the other person's there, but it really is about you. And we can't control what other people do or think or what they say or how they are. We can only focus on ourselves. So this is really important to remember in this context. Okay. Now let's bring in this uh, specific context of, you know, maybe there's a rift between two people. Maybe the relationship is just really difficult and for whatever reason it is. And again, it's in the context of someone who's close to you. So it could be a family member or it could be someone that you live with or, you know, whatever kind of situation like that, that you may not be able to specifically just like walk away from it. You know what I mean? So, so it's not as simple as just like, well, okay, this relationship is over, like in the sense of like, you know, maybe a friendship or a dating situation where it's just like, okay, we're done, (laughs) like, you know, and move on kind of thing, right? This is a context where maybe it's not so simple to just do that. So when, when you have that kind of relationship, when you are in that sort of experience, the first thing that's important for you to understand to be able to move through and, and get through any sort of tough circumstance or situation in relation with that person is that you first of all have to be clear and aware of what you desire for yourself in terms of um, the environment around you or in terms of you know what kind of uh, relationship like the energy of the relationship you know what I mean so it's like you have to be clear on what you desire and why why do you desire to have a, a an environment around you that is peaceful or that is supportive or, you know, whatever, like you have to get very clear for yourself and, and just clearly communicate that to yourself. Like I desire to be or have relationships around me that are peaceful or that are supportive or that are loving or, or whatever, you know? So you have to get clear on, on that desire first and foremost, what is important for you when it comes to your environment and when it comes to your connections with other people. The next thing is that you do have to create boundaries that align with that. So let's say that you're in a situation where, you know, you, you, one of the things that you desire is just peaceful, like a peaceful exchange, peaceful relationship, peaceful, that sort of thing. And you know that with whatever, whoever the person is <laughs> that we're, we're, you're thinking about in this situation, you, you just know that, you know, there can't be much of a conversation with them or that um, you can only stick to certain topics. And that if you start talking about, you know, other things that it's not going to go, go well when, when you go into other, veer into other topics. So one of the boundaries would be that you really just stick to these three topics that you know are manageable between you and that person, right? So that's an example of a boundary that you set. Or another example of a a boundary is that you only spend, you know, X amount of time with that person or in the same environment as that person because you know that any more time than that and your energy just gets drained, goes out the door, like whatever, right? So, So that's another type of boundary that you can set and you have to stick with those boundaries. You have to really honor that for yourself. Okay. So that's another thing that's really important is that when you recognize what the boundaries need to be to preserve whatever it is that you desire to have in your experience, you have to stick to those boundaries. Okay. That's another important part of this. The third thing is to then, you know, aside from like kind of having that clear in your mind, The other part of this is being able to find gratitude and appreciation wherever you can in and in the context, specifically in the context of the situation in within the relationship, within, um, you know, whatever the specific dynamic is in which you are, which can be complex sometimes with relationships. Right. So I know that that's not necessarily an easy thing. But being able to find the things that you can appreciate or the things that you can be grateful for within the context, right? So so in this example, you know, let's just say with, you know, the person that you're like, okay, I can only talk about these three things with them, (laughs) anything else and everything goes off the rails. 
maybe there's a quality about them that you can appreciate like okay they they mean well in these certain ways like i know that they mean well or maybe there's a, an appreciation for who you get to be as a result of this specific person right so maybe there's nothing specific like quality wise you know i know that there's so many different types of people maybe you can't find anything to appreciate about them, but you can appreciate yourself and who you get to become and what you get to learn because of this experience, right? So it's whatever you can find to bring, start to bring in that energy of appreciation and uh, in that this energy of like, okay, like this, it, it brings in this higher frequency and this energy from the divine through you to help you to con to, to be able to move forward and to be able to pull the boundaries, be able to even shift the context and the situation over time, right? But it starts with that because if we're doing it out of a place of resentment or hate or, you know, anger, frustration, it's going to be really hard to actually get ourselves into a better situation or into a better environment or context when we're doing it from that space. So we really like it's really important to trust that there is something that you can find. It's almost like that like sliver of hope, right? The silver lining that you can, can find in that situation. And if you're having a hard time with this, you can call on Archangel Gabriel or Archangel Michael or Archangel Zadkiel. Those three are the ones who are coming forward as I'm saying this. You can call on those angels to help to kind of like start this process. You know, you're kind of like, okay, I understand that. There has to be a silver lining here. There has to be something positive for me to kind of like be able to, to latch on to, 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 to support me in elevating out of this. Please help me to find this because I'm having a really hard time right now. Help me to see the silver lining. Help me to find appreciation. Help me to find gratitude. You know, and you can ask for that. You can pray for that to be shown to you so that you can then take that and build the energy from there. Okay, so you're not doing this alone. You can ask the angels to support you with this. So that's the next thing. And then after that, what you're going to do is you're you're going to be actively working towards creating the environment that does bring you peace, freedom joy, you know, whatever the experience may be that you truly desire for yourself. And it's, it's seeing that you are not necessarily stuck in that situation. And I know that sometimes it can feel like you are stuck in the situation, you know, especially let's say it's a family member and you're like, um, that person is my, my, that family member, like I can't replace them. However, and yes, it's true, you cannot replace that specific person, but what you can do is you can shift the environment and you can bring in and, and have that energy, that greater context of freedom, peace, joy, whatever the thing is for you. And knowing that that's what you're working towards and that you're going to be shown how to create that for yourself, that is going to be the driving force for you, okay? But the, the key thing is that you have to believe that that's possible and you have to know that this is part of your, the overall growth, which I talked about at the beginning, the overall growth for you is to understand how you navigate these kinds of things and still create that for yourself and still create freedom, joy, peace, you know, all of the, all of those things that we truly desire for ourselves. So this is, this is something that's really important for us to lean into and for us to uh, continue to hold in our vision so that we don't fall into the energy of like, well, I'm just stuck here or the energy of despair. There's no way to shift this because at the end of the day, we all get to experience those desires. We all get to experience those feelings of peace, joy, freedom, love, etc. And so it's about, okay, you know, I can't change that person, but I can change my perspective in my environment and work towards whatever that might look like for me in my specific situation. Okay. So I want you to take this and really sit with this and, and ask, like I said, the angels call on them to show you, especially when it feels you're like, yeah, that's, that's a great thought, but like, <laughs> this doesn't work in my situation. Right. Um, I challenge you to, to ask the angels to show you 
differently to prove you wrong. Um, and, and the other final thing that I'll share is that it is important for us to just notice if we, if we hold, if we're holding on to an idea that of like how things could be right. Sometimes we, we get stuck in situations because we're holding on to the hope that that person's going to change or that, you know, Oh, well, things will be different next time or whatever. And, and if you been in this specific context, a specific situation where you just know that like they're not doing anything on their part to change or shift or grow or whatever, then it is important for you. Again, this is another boundary thing where you choose and decide like it's a nice idea, but I don't know if it's going to happen. So I have to choose my peace. I have to choose my joy. I have to choose my freedom and work towards whatever that might look like for you. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know how this lands with you in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions about this. I cannot wait to hear from you. And once again, if you desire to get your question answered on the podcast, go to the website, christinaaroche.com forward slash podcast to submit your question. And I cannot wait to be able to answer it on the podcast. As always, I'm sending you so much love and angel blessings, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. If you are someone who is seeking to be supported by the angels, to deepen your connection to the angels, to understand how to work with them in your everyday life, then I invite you to join me inside of my membership group called the Angels Guild, where we go deep in understanding how to connect with each of the archangels, understanding how they are here to support you and to guide you on your journey of growth, of connection, of living in your highest potential, opening up to your gifts, living in your truth and being empowered in who you are. Join me inside of the Angels Guild. All of the details to join the membership are in the show notes below.